name is Iris. And my name is Julia. And today I'm going to tell you how the discovery of the structure of DNA happened. At some point in your life, you probably have heard about DNA, which is a type of nucleic acid that stands out for storing the genetic information of the vast majority of living beings. But it doesn't stop there. The structure of DNA has a much more complex story. Well, it all started in 1953, when Francis Crick, James Watson and Maurice Focus did DNA-related studies at Cambridge and discovered that three-dimensional structure are more commonly called the double equus. Because of the work of biochemist Phoebus Levine and other scientists in Watson and Crick's day, knew that DNA was made of subunits called nucleotides, which in turn are composed of sugar, the oxygen bonds, along with a phosphate group and one of the four nitrogenous bases called adenine, timine, guanine, and cytosine. You can see this structure in the following image. <laughs> base C and G, which have only one ring, and you call it primates, when base I and G, which have two rings, are called polymers. DNA nucleotides assemble into chains, like it by covalent bonds, which form between the dioxin bonds sugar of one nucleotide and the photospate group of next. This arrangement makes an alternative chain for photospate and dioxin ribbons, sugar groups, and the DNA form an X structure, known as sugar photospate backbone. Other key information related to the structure of DNA came from Austrian biochemist Eric Chagorf. Chagorf analyzed the DNA of different species, determining their A, T, C, and G base composition. He made several key observations. A, T, C, and G are not found in the equal amounts of months bases far between species, but not between individuals of the same species. The amount of A always equaled the amount of T, and C always equaled the amount of G. But don't stop there. Instead of doing new experiments in the lab, Watson and Crick collected and analyzed existing diet sets, organizing them in a light form. Hey, wait, some of its most crucial clues about the structure of DNA come off Rosalind Franklin, a chemist who worked in a laboratory of physics with Maurice Wilkins. She was an expert in a powerful technique for determining the structure of molecules, known as X ray crystallography. When the crystalline form of a molecule such as DNA is exposed to X-rays, some of the rays are reflected by the atoms in the crystal, forming a diffraction pattern that gives clues about the structure of the molecule. However read it like this, it was a very simple, but the truth is different. Rosalind learned to figure out the structure of the DNA, but left it incomplete. However, their findings were fundamental for the American biochemist James Dewey Watson and the British Maurice Wilkins and Francis Crick to confirm the double helical structure of the DNA molecule, giving them the Nobel Prize in Medicine in Physiology in 1962, having in the great injustice, especially for being a woman. Although using data of X-ray photographs obtained by her, Crick and Watson not only did they include her in the original article publishment in the journal Nature but also omitted the decisive contribution on the elucidation of the problem. They did the same with another member of the English team, Marius Wilkins, who had also participated in research. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about crystallography. So, X-ray crystallography was only possible thanks to Bryce Law, which has been revealed by English physical Sir Double H. Brett and his son Sir Double L. Brett in 1930, to explain why clearly flakes of crystal reflect beams by X-ray in certain angle of incident. There is much more behind this formula, but we won't talk about it in this video, because it's very complex and extensive subject. But moving on, crystallography gave Watson and Crick important conclusions of the structure of DNA. Some came from the famous image, future one, a remarkable DNA diffusion X-ray, image produced by Franklin and his graduate student. To Watson, the x shattered diffusion partner of the Franklin image mentally suggests a helical to extended structure of DNA. The structure of DNA represented in the Watson and Crick module is a double-stranded and anti-parallel rightward helix. The sugar photosphate backbones of the DNA stems make up the outside of the helix, while the nitrogenous bases are found on the inside and form nitrogen-bounded pairs that hold the DNA stems together. 
Double-stranded DNA is an antiparallel molecule that is composed of two strands by run by side but pointing in the opposite direction. In a double-stranded DNA molecule, the 5 free photosphere end of the standardized the 3 free oxy group, ends of his partner, and etc. We discovered open the door to understand the many aspects of the DNA functions, such as knowing how it copied and now the information it carries is used by the cell to make proteins. Watson and Crick's model ensured in the new era of discoveries in molecular biology and formed the foundation of the most cutting edge research the biology of biomedicine today. So did you like to know about the discovery? There was even a twist in the story, adding an enormous contribution to the science, right? If you like it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe in the channel to learn more facts about science. There's a video every weekend. You don't miss it, huh? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you always miss it. Uh. <laughs>